Okay, folks, so welcome aboard and welcome your faces to a brand new uh, episode of Around the World Flight. It's got leg one for me from SeaTac to Sydney. So, aboard our 777-300 VH VPH at the gate in uh, Seattle. So, as you can see, the aircraft is still very much asleep. We'll start initializing the FMC. Again, apologies for this audio being slightly out of sync. Actually, you know what we'll do is go up and initialize the ADIO. Sorry about the lag, folks. It's just a terrible scenery package for lag. Uh, anyway, guys, so as I say, the audio is a bit out of sync because I am recording this about half an hour after the, to, uh, I film it because the audio went kaput on me, which is slightly frustrating. Anyway, what I can do though is I can obviously mute that, which will stop some fizz in the, this. So, quick root initialization we're going from KCIA, KS, KSIA, Seattle, to YSSY, Sydney. So we'll do a quick root request, that's going to be the greatest way to do this, uh, that's our root, there we go, just activate that, and uh, departures, we can go from runway 16, uh, no, can't delete it, alright, I'll just go to the other, take the back door entrance of uh, reinitializing the whole departure, departing runway 16 left at Sydney, okay, we'll just install the root up link now by hitting load, and root 1, in case loading. Okay, whilst that's happening, I can always uh, enter my INS position. There we go. Uh, we, uh, I've got it on a fast INS align just so we can get out of here quite quickly today. Um, minute and a half in. Okay, well, the runway's dropped out again. Hmm. Uh, one six left for departure. We're not taking any SIDs today uh, because there's no point for the route which we're, which we're taking. Uh, we'll be going with velocity 158. And it's going to be fuel of 132500. A lot of fuel on board today, 91% of our total fuel capacity. Here that it's 91% straight. Um, as per doors fuel, that's all done really. Okay, weights, that's uh, the performance initialization that we can see there. So uh, we'll just yeah, take off 1D right, as it looks sensible. I will regret this in about 10 minutes' time, trust me. Double click for the center of gravity. And uh, next page, we'll now get our. Uh, Wind speed in, so just wind speed up in the top left at 127 to 8 knots. One three, okay, 131 to 8 knots. Almost 9 knots even. Hmm. Peculiar. Anyway, so headwind, it gives the headwind of 8 knots and a crosswind of 5 knots. Don't ask how that works, it just does. Uh, reference OAT is 13 degrees. Okay, so that's pretty much the FMC initialization sorted. We can now look at our um, <coughs> MCP mode. So V2 is 191 knots, so that's a massive V2. Normally, my V2 is kind of like 180, one, yeah, 170, 180, never 190. Nearly 200 knot V2 there. Okay, next thing we can do, oh, I keep forgetting that you can't get the heading mode out of uh, here. Um, sorry, the heading of the runway out of here on the 777. Quickly scrolling the heading around to 165. Right, a slight pressure change, I'll change that in a couple of seconds. Okay, and looking back up at the overhead to get that ready. So, um, ground is clear now, so we can pressurise the hydraulic systems. Doing it from left to right. I I believe that's probably the wrong way, but hey ho. Seatbelt signs can come on, boarding is now to complete, fuel pumps, they can all come on, ready for the start. And that's all good. Curious that that fuel pressure light for the right hand engine is still there. Um, anyway, it's just a humongous fuel load we're taking with us. Um, so, in the first way points are Seattle VOR, but that's going to kind of get dropped out. It looks really pretty peculiar if you look at it. Okay, uh, GSX, I'll just cut the video here for two seconds folks. Okay, I might not cut the video, I'll just do like a songy dancey thing. Anyway, sorry about this guys, what happened was GSX just has decided that these standards are uh, too small for the 777, so it can't accept it, which is peculiar really, but Okay, request push and departure, and uh, get ready to go. We can now uh, remove everything, close the doors. Uh, we'll take a Swiss port, I think, today. Uh, yep, Swiss port. And we'll arm the door. Disconnect the air bridge with control and J. Swiss port international are our ground handlers today, as I've said. And FS actions, we'll just quickly check the ground connections and remove the wheel shocks. 
So for some reason, GSX will now proceed to take a hissy fit with me, and I won't know how to fix it. That's a uh, 6,818 mile trip. Uh, arriving in approximately, what's that, that's two, yeah, about 14 hours and uh, 18 minutes from now. Okay, that's everything's in there, we'll get the quick route request, so wind, re wind request, there we go. All I need to do now is hit execute for that to load in. Yep, there we go. Progress. So again, that's slightly changed our arrival time actually. I think I made us arrive 15 minute, uh, 17 minutes earlier. And that's just because the wind on route. We'll take 10,000 as only a sharp shoot. Everything else is configured. That is sweet. Cancel the air cast. Uh, yep, locked spot. There we go. So you can see, alright, GSX hasn't actually moved for some reason. This is what I was tell it saying when the video happened. It's a dodge, dodgy piece of piece of push whack, push back work on my part. He ain't moving. So we're just doing the routine push back method of shift and P. I still haven't worked that out though. And our bridge is finally moving away from the aircraft. There we go, shift and P. So we can move on way, start moving back from the gate now. Just go back into the cockpit. Yep, he's not moving. He ain't a moving. I think why the reason this scenery lags so hard is I don't think my computer can deal with the idea of being able to see into a terminal and there's some glitches because of the orbex which you're going to see in a little bit. I will start the right hand engine first, so starting one. And I'll just quickly use Easy Doc to swing us around onto the pedestal here. Okay, I can't really steer us from that, so just locking up ever so slightly. There we go. Fuel on. Okay. Auto brake start here. Uh, no, I don't need any spoilers on this. And I can set flaps one, flaps five. There we go. Right. <coughs> A little bit of cough today. <laughs> um, interesting cloud developments. I don't know why I decided to look up at this stage. Cause it, oh, it was when I realised that I couldn't actually look up to check for starter cutoutness on that. Because um, that's just the way the view works in this. It's peculiar, as I say. Um, it's pretty cool, though. Anyway, uh, there we go. Starter cutout. Fuel pump good on the right hand engine. Don't know why it was indicating low before, but we've now got the. Uh, I'll just go back to the pilot's view next because I can use the asymmetric thrust to get us around the turn better. Even that'll, even with asymmetric thrust, it'll be a pretty tight turn though, because I've stopped the pushback a little bit too early. So. So yeah, I know I haven't got, um, I didn't unclick my throttles, I just forgot to do it. Um, I'm allowed a mistake every once in a while, I think. Okay, so just be very careful on this turn to avoid the steps. Yeah, and the steps would kind of drive away after they were, after we were done with them, not just wait there idly. Anyway, a little bit extra power now, just to eke us through this turn. Got no more than about five knots, you can see the, the, the scenery glitching uh, just ahead of us now. That's because there's compatibility issues between this and the Orbex scenery. Uh, it's, it's not a scenery for Seattle, but it's like a scenery upgrade. It's complicated. Ah, uh, okay, we're a bit close now. No, we definitely did not just mow through that uh, baggage trolley. Welcome to Seattle, folks, anyway. Uh, definitely Seattle, you can see it's Port of Seattle. I'm actually quite impressed by how little this is lagging when, when I'm capturing in 720p. The reason this is in 720p is 1080p is just pointlessly big. It's actually the same quality as 720p is the same quality as 1080p, but it just um, merges some of the frames together. So if you end up pausing this video, you'll see it's a little bit blurry, and that's why. Yeah, there's the big scenery glitch straight ahead of us now. Uh, anyway, we just got a taxi down at the end. Again, there's a scenery glitch near the end of the runway. Um, if I'd known how much of an issue that was going to cause for the flight safety, uh, you would, yeah. Anyway, so it's going to be another right turn now. But doors automatic, passenger signs are on, APU, I should be turning that off in a couple of seconds. Turning a little bit too soon for the turn there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wish I could talk this fast every day. Okay. So just get us reasonably on the centre line. 
This aircraft is very, very heavy because you can see we're at idle thrust, which is usually enough to taxi the triple seven, even if it's quite heavy. And uh, we're just slowing down, which, we, as I say, normally idle thrust is enough to keep the aircraft rolling. Even sometimes make it accelerate if it's very light. You just got to ride the brakes. Fuel's quite chilly right now. Minus three, it looks like. Oh, no, it's plus eight. Wonder why it's so different to the OAT because it's just been topped in. Hmm, peculiar. Anyway, you can see the scenery glitch ahead of us there. That mound is actually midway, well, about 200 feet down the runway. So we landed from the turn in before that. Now I've, uh, I'm going to do the flight control check on the taxi here, and you're going to see me kind of regret doing the taxi check right now. Um, I wonder what I'm clicking on. As I say, folks, this is back commentary because of uh, I. I was checking if I was in. Um, Auto rudder mode, which I was, and then I disengaged it. Anyway, flight control page. So I can do a flight control check during the taxi now. So full left, full right, neutral, full forward, full back, neutral, and I'll do rudders in just a second. I need that up on my FMC. Uh, I thought I was going to do rudders when I stopped, but then I said I could do it on the fly. Actually, when you sort the trim out, that's one thing I do need to do and get us to six degrees of upwards trim. Um, five, twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five, and that's six degrees of trim. That's uh, trim correctly configured for the departure now. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do the flight control check now when I actually stopped here, but no. Um, I'm going to do the rudder check on the taxi, which will just show you how much effect. Yeah, a full deflection of the nose wheel steering actually has on the aircraft. Now APU can come off now. We don't need we don't need your powerness anymore. Um a negative two to two feet. I don't understand why the radar there we go. No. I don't understand why the radar shows negative two when if you're actually on the ground it should should it should show zero. There we go. English. I'm just slave man to the ND. And, okay, so I'll do the rudder check now. Whoa! And right again. There we go. We did it. We didn't even <laughs> go onto the grass much. Yeah, here's the glitch we're coming up on. We'll take the next turn and uh, go from 1 6 left. Okay, so I'll just do a check to make sure we are clear on the approach to run at 1 6 left. We are. There's nobody for quite a while. I.e., I'm the only person alive in the world right now, except those people driving cars. Um, I don't understand it personally, but I don't. Anyway, those lights are actually Orbex lights. It's about half past seven in the morning local time right now. Well, it's about twenty to eight in the morning. Um, that's how well I've got going. Okay, so I'm just going to do the left turn into stand. Oh, in, in stand? No, nope. onto the runway in a couple of seconds. Again, so clear on the approach. Uh, transponder is already on by the looks of things. And as they're entering the runway, so. Okay, just a little bit of a last minute fast turn then, but ah, so I can deal with that. Ooh, this one looks a bit narrow. It's normal width, but at this stage it just looks narrow for some reason. Um, and again, just nosing out a substantial way in the runway, I suppose. Um, ooh, flashy runway. And we've just got a 40% power now. We'll do this rolling. Apparently, it has no effect on your takeoff performance. Whether you stop, put the brakes on 40 full power. Okay, Toga. So that will be airspeed alive. And 80 knots. This acceleration is rather slow. The runway looks rather short. This should be fun. I'll take tell you what it is. 120. Okay, for some reason the thrust rolled back at this stage, so I just maxed everything out and went with it. Uh, okay, so we're about five seconds from V1 now. That's what that trend uh, vector shows. V1. Oh my god, this is close. Rotate, rotate, rotate. 
Ah, ah, don't tail strike, just don't tail strike. There we go, we're on. I think we probably had about a three foot takeoff margin there. I should, I should calculate for our takeoff weight what, what that would be in Top Cat. I might drop it in the comments or as a, uh, like as a thing of the video just to tell you what the, what the takeoff margin that Top Cat calculated was. Okay. So we're now in nav mode. What would pilot's now engaged? So uh, we'll pretty much just do a climb ahead now. For some reason, the gear extends in a few seconds. I've got no idea why it does that. Uh, we'll take well, our next cruising altitude, which is 30,000 feet, I believe. Yep, 30,000. Straight up to 30,000 feet it's turn with a turn on course. So, yeah, folks, that was quite impressive. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, guys, so as, as I say, thanks for watching. I'm going to probably, well, I'm going to stop my commentary here, I can tell you that much. And see you in about four hours' time uh, when we come to do our first pause report. See you then, folks. Bye-bye.